Hi guys and welcome to our Youth for Integrity podcast episode 5. Today we're having a critical conversation to the youth. How do we participate? How do we improve youth agency? And I believe we have a solution holder with us today. We're going to be discussing democracy, we're going to be discussing agents, we're going to be discussing the youth. My guest, I'm just going to ask my guest to introduce himself. You can go ahead. Hi, uh, my name is Tendai Bebe. I work at my Gamba Network, I'm a tech officer there. So most of my my job role is finding is finding how we can use technology to increase engagement in the civic space. Thank you, Tendai. I believe most who would know Magamba know that Magamba have an innovative way of delivering their programs, which is why I believe Tendai is a key person to speak to in terms of uh, effort to improve integrity and to pr- improve agency amongst the youth and how uh, they participate in our governance. So, Tendai, today you're here for a specific innovation. Right. I attended one of the Magamba Network uh, presentations where they were presenting a solution that you developed, a very interesting one. Would you care to, 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 to explain what that innovation is and what it does? Yeah, so basically uh, the innovation was, uh, was something that we called the Rock Kiosk. So essentially what we did was we decided to build a small compact unit that you could carry, you can deploy in any remote place. And what that unit does is it can allow people in that remote community to be able to access content that you and I, with the benefits of the internet, have been have access to, like short form content, short, short form content videos, images, text, videos, uh, or audio. Uh, but now it's now done from this device. Um, without the need of an external internet connection. And the reason was, the reason for it was, there are places where people do not have things like a good internet connection, if any, Mm -hmm. because they are so far out from, how they say, standard civilization. Um, And what what tends up happening is people then tend to participate less Mm because they are not as much aware of what's going on because they have no information about what's yes. going yeah. so, so, so the traditional methodology for civil society, for people programming in rural areas is that when we want to involve people in the rural areas or we want to make sure that they're not left behind, understanding that most of our campaigns are conducted online, Twitter, uh, Facebook, Instagram, we are, for rural populations are just going to be using community meetings and um, bulk SMS. But what your solution does, it, it bridges the gap. So what you're saying is there's no need for an internet connection. All you need is a, de- is a device that can connect to, to the rural kiosk. What are the components of the rural kiosk, actually? Yeah, yes, so that's correct. You only need a device that can connect to the rural kiosk. So what you need for the rural kiosk is components. It's, it has a small, uh, compact uh, computer, uh, and then a wireless network appliance or a Wi-Fi router and a power unit so that you can mm-hmm. power everything and then you know the standard cable to link up everything. Mm-hmm. And what it does is the computer um, the computer itself hosts everything that is essentially it hosts the content mm-hmm. that's that you had that would have been uploaded. And then people can then access that content by connecting to the raw kiosk through that wireless network. And I think in 2024 now, we've seen a proliferation of low-cost smartphone devices, mm-hmm. right? Yeah. Um, and this is actually a good thing because now uh, it means that the, the high penetration of these mobile devices means that some people have some level of access to some form of digital media, mm-hmm. but there are still limitations in that in some places, they either have to rely on, again on that, on bulk SMS. Mm-hmm. But we already know they have the device. So mm-hmm. all we have to do is build a small uh, kind of like piece of hardware mm-hmm. uh, or system that allows them to to take advantage of what they already have and, okay. and, and get access to content. So, so what I found interesting about your solution is the fact that from the unit that I saw that you built, there were recycled materials. 
Yeah. For instance, you said there are three components. Number one being the computer. Yeah. And for the computer, you were using this yeah. laptop yeah. without the screen, yeah. just this mother motherboard, yeah. an old motherboard, yeah. and an old Wi-Fi router. Yeah. And an inverter. Yeah. So the inverter then powers the whole system once you've combined it. Yeah, exactly. What, what, what does the cost look like? So the cost for um, for one of the units that we built was around 250. 250 US dollars. Yeah, 250. Just 250 US dollars. Yeah, and I we believe we can lower down the cost. It can keep going down. Yeah. So the thing is, um, with what happens with 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 hardware, right, is that every year, you know, manufacturers are pushing the limits of what computes can do. Right. So every year we get a computer which is more computer or phone which is more powerful than its predecessor. Mm -hmm. Now what happens, let's say, okay, if every year you're getting a new device that is more powerful, what happens to maybe five generations, like five years, like devices that are five years behind? Mm -hmm. Well, in some places they are thrown away. They get scrapped, yeah. They get scrapped because people want the new thing. Mm -hmm. But we think that that wouldn't be a lot of waste. Rather than throwing away a computer or just maybe shoving it up for taking it, taking up dust, mm -hmm. we can take that and then we can repurpose it to build our kiosk. It also lowers on the hardware, mm -hmm. the, the hardware cost. Um, because initially, if you're trying to, yeah, you can build it from new stuff, but mm -hmm. it's expensive and yeah. that doesn't scale. You can try to build your own hardware, which is difficult because the thing about hardware is it has to go through various things like testing, mm. making sure that it's ready. Already the manufacturer has done it for you, so you can just take advantage of it. You can use that. something that you already know will work. Off the shelf, yeah. Okay. Yeah. So what you're telling me is that we don't have to throw away these old gadgets. No. We know we already know that um, over the last five years, like you've been saying, yeah. our computers are improving. People are upgrading their computers. Yeah. So instead of throwing away that old computer, you can just take the motherboard. Yeah. And then if I give you the motherboard and a router, you'll be able to develop something that will help people, especially in remote raw locations. Yeah, exactly. So, so you're telling me in terms of our content, we can put uh, videos of someone explaining the constitution. We can put an audio of someone explaining the constitution. We can put the constitution in PDF format yeah. onto the motherboard. Anything you can put onto a computer, you can put on that. Yeah. Uh, you can put on the raw kiosk. For instance, this laptop is has a capacity of, of about 500 gig. Yeah. You can put 500 gig of material here. Yeah. Develop a raw kiosk. Go put it in um, in rural Mbire, remote Mbire. Yeah. And then anyone with a device that can connect without internet connection, it has a its own. Yes, I don't well, know yeah. what you call it, but it's it's got its own connectivity where you just connect. Yeah. And yeah. you can access that information. Exactly. So essentially, it's a it's a local area network. Mm -hmm. So it's 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 actually how the internet works. Mm -hmm. um, it's not something that is new. It's mm -hmm. actually the idea, the core idea behind the internet. Mm -hmm. The idea of the internet was, you know, you had one computer that is in was in one university, mm -hmm. and another computer in another research department, mm -hmm. and they would be connected. Connected. And yeah. that. What then? What then? We called the internet was a bunch of computers that are interconnected. Okay. So we're just taking just a slice of that one computer mm. and then connect a whole bunch of people. What I'm going to do is, with the knowledge that we have, that people already have these materials, probably <laughs> sitting at home, that they don't know actually of the use. Yeah. Um, what I'm going to do is to make a call, a public call for everyone who has an old machine, an old UPS, or an old uh, Wi-Fi router. You can hand it over, and Tendai here will be able to develop a solution that can help youth in the raw areas to participate in our campaign. 
to participate in the wider effort for agency in governance issues to make sure that integrity becomes the pinnacle of participation okay. so amongst the youth. Tendai says it's important to be curious, number one. It's also important to understand that whilst we have all these solutions, they can be used for different reasons. Yeah. You have social media as a platform. It's a platform without a goal or an objective in its end. But the goal comes from you as a member of the youth. You need to remember that one, it's important for you to participate. Where do you participate? Use your social media for good. Use your AI for good. Chendai, thank you so much for coming to the show. And thank you so much for enlightening us. And I hope that many people out there will be reaching out to find out how they can participate in helping spread the issue of the raw kiosk.